again to Ask an Atheist. We're a weekly educational call-in program dedicated to atheism, skeptical inquiry, and the separation of church and state. We are live from Scan Studios in Seattle every Sunday at 3 in the afternoon Pacific time. And we're archived online at askanatheist.tv. My name is Libby Mistretta, and with me as sometimes is Mike Gillis, my co-host. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Mike. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Going pretty good. We've had a, a bit of a, an interesting week because we have been trying to rally the troops to write to the Seattle uh, City Council to, to get on board to save SCAN, as you have already heard a million times if you watch our show or listen to the podcast. Um, we're going to talk about it again, though, because we love SCAN. Uh, SCAN is, is one of the many things that are being, that is being considered to uh, be sacrificed in a budget cut for the 2011 City of Seattle budget. So we would appreciate it so very much if you, our viewers, would write to uh, the Seattle, Seattle City Council members and let them know how much you enjoy the show and how much you enjoy SCAN, which is the studio that makes it possible for us to bring the show to you. Um, you can go to scantv.org and they have, yeah. what do they have there for, for people well, to check out? Well, there's information on there that you can contact the city council members. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a resident of Seattle. Uh, making it known that uh, Scan TV actually does have viewers outside of Seattle actually makes it more important that honestly in a lot of ways we can be an ambassador to people watching us on the internet, not only in uh, the rest of the country but around the world. Uh, we actually got a phone call that we weren't able to take last week from Tehran. Yeah. So, I mean, people are watching us there. He had to go to work. He didn't have time to stay on hold, actually, for us to take the call. But there are people from other countries who've gotten emails from everywhere, from, like, Ecuador, Tijuana, from the U.K. We, we get them from all over. A lot of people are watching our show. Um, that's, that's something that just would not be possible if Scan wasn't here. Right. I think it's also important to notice that... Uh, SCAN isn't actually paid for with tax dollars. You know, this is something that um, I've seen some people go, oh, I don't want my tax dollars being spent on X. Um, it's not. Your, your tax dollars do not go into it. This is actually franchise fees paid by Comcast as part of their deal with the uh, Seattle area to be the official cable provider. So Comcast actually, uh, and uh, subscribers of Comcast, pay that, and then that money is supposed to be given to SCAN. Unfortunately, it first has to make its way through a middleman, which is basically the general fund of the city. At that point, you have to deal with politicians. It becomes really, really hard to sort of get this stuff going. So we're in the middle of a budget shortfall, and SCAN is talking about you know, losing its budget. It's also funny because one of the, the other people who's competing over a lot of this cash, I believe at the Department of Something and Technology, um, he dropped a bombshell at the last budget hearing talking about, oh, we're, in the meantime, we're going to spend this money on good things like $400,000 to upgrade our email. And I'm like, really? Uh, My idea was just use Gmail. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Right? It's free. That would save you $400,000 right and there. And seriously. Which you could put to, you know, scan. And seriously, even our show has uh, askanatheist.tv email addresses, and it didn't cost us... Um, $400,000. That's a majority of the budget of SCAN. So anyways, right. please go to scantv.org. Um, check it out. Check it out. Please help us there out. Are, there are links there that will tell you what you can do if you do feel inclined to write some polite letters, um, letting everybody at the, the Seattle City Council. Is it the Seattle City Council? It is the City Council. Seattle City Council. I just want to make sure I have the right branch of government. Um, let them know how important the show is to you and SCAN itself. Um, and speaking of SCAN, we have reruns, as we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. We now have reruns at 6 p.m., on scan. So, Monday morning, or Monday Monday evening, 6 o'clock. Yes. So tomorrow night at 6. So excited. I love that. I love having reruns. It's it's so cool. It's so Doubles 80s. our audience. I mean, I feel like I should put on my footy pajamas and eat a bowl of, I don't know, Frosted Flakes in front of the TV and watch the reruns. It's That's great. That's weird. You can actually go home and watch yourself on TV tomorrow. Wow. But yeah, it's <laughs> good stuff all around. And yes. And it's really important to keep SCAN going is that we are one of two atheism-centered public access programs in the country. One of two. Um, if SCAN goes under, it could be just one again. And uh, I know that we at the show and the producers are very dedicated to keep this show going in uh, whatever format we can. But we like the status quo we have now. Not only do we like being able to have the sort of free facilities and use of equipment that we have now, but we also really like the people who work at SCAN. We want to keep them yeah, keep cool. their jobs. They're awesome people. 
They're and, very professional. Um, and plus, we get to have like whatever background we want behind us anytime. We could change it right now if we wanted to, but we won't. We won't. We won't. Um, <clears throat> that's all courtesy of Scan. Don't get any ideas in the booth. I can hear you coming through the headset. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you if you are part of an atheist, agnostic, or free thought free thought group in the state of Washington, sorry, it's been Good a long effort. day. Good effort. Good <laughs> effort. Uh, and you would like to get your group mentioned on Ask an Atheist, please go to our website, askanatheist.tv. We have an email form there. Send us an email. Tell us who you are, what you do, and we will give you a plug on the show because we love you. That's how we roll. That's how we do things. Um, should we launch into news stories here? Let's do some news stories. We want to go from dark to light. Let's go from dark to light because I don't think this is a pretty dark story. So we have two news stories for you today. Think of the other one as a chaser. <clears throat> chaser. Palate cleanser, if you will. All right, here we go. I'm just launching right into it. Man beats child, citing Bible as excuse. That's great. A man in the rural southern United States savagely beat his child with a wooden rod and told police afterward that he was following the teachings of the Bible. 50-year-old Stephen W. Cooper in the small town of Crestview in Oskaloosa, Oskaloosa County, Florida. Oh, it's going to be a long day. Florida. Told investigators from the local sheriff's office that when his child became unruly, he took a wooden dowel and beat the child because that's what the Bible teaches. This was no mere swat either. The child was left with deep purple bruising. And according to Wendy Victoria of the Destin Log, the police told the, uh, the police said the bruising was still visible on the child's arms and buttocks five days after the incident, indicating deep tissue damage. Um, yeah, it's great. And the sheriff's office did not condone Cooper's Judeo-Christian dis disciplinary methods. The police charged him with felony cruelty to a child, which is good. That's exactly what they should have done. That's pretty awful. Um, he told the Department of Children and Family Investigators that he could not make any promises that he wouldn't use the dowel on his child again. Uh, he also refused to sign or agree to a safety plan. Um, so, what well, does like, the what's Bible... a safety plan? I mean, like, wrap a towel around the stick? I don't know. It was probably some kind of, like, will you willingly agree to let this child go to foster care for it? I don't, I don't know. I'm just guessing. It doesn't uh, say in the article what, what a safety plan is. It may be... I don't know. I don't live in Florida. Uh, so what does the Bible say about physically punishing children? The following are the most common passages from the King James Version used to excuse the practice. Oh, fun stuff. Proverbs 13, 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes diligently. Proverbs 19, 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Oh, Jesus. Proverbs 22:15 Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Proverbs 23:13 Withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod he shall not die. You could is that actual conjugation beatest? <laughs> it, it works here I guess. Beatest him around his yeah, head. I love that one in particular like beat the hell out of him he won't die. It's fine. <laughs> Proverbs 23, 14, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. And Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Okay, so really? So hit your kid. You're, why are we still following these tenets from the Bronze Age? I mean, and th these are just the ones that, that mention beating, too, by the way. These aren't the ones that tell you to stone your children if they sass you. Oh, yeah, you're so, supposed to straight out kill your kid. Yeah, you're supposed to, at some point, like if your kid back talks enough or refuses to clean his room enough times, you're supposed to kill him, according to the old uh, King James Version of the Bible. So and Just according to the Bible, I mean, the killing will never end. Yeah. Well, there are so many crimes for which you're supposed to straight out kill somebody. You're supposed to kill people for everything in the Bible. And if you're not willing to kill them, people are supposed to kill you. Right. It's, it's it's a bit surprising to me that people still claim, especially in a political context, people claim all the time that, oh, we get our morality and our ethics and our laws from the Bible. Really? Do you really think that's where we get our, our moral ideas of how to raise our children is from the Bible that tells you to beat the hell out of your kid if they don't obey you? We don't do that anymore in our society. It's no longer done. The, the, pardon me using a, a potentially dangerous buzzword here, but the zeitgeist has changed. 
I know. I said the Z word. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not invoking the name of the film. Yeah, I'm invoking I... the actual word, which means the spirit of the times. It's changed. We don't beat our kids anymore. It's not considered okay anymore to beat a person, whether they're a kid or not, because they stick. don't do what you say. With a stick or with, with anything a weapon. else. With a weapon, too. Yeah. I, I, I think this is a, a great illustration of how little even fundamentalists follow in the Bible. Right. That uh, the number of things you're supposed to kill somebody for, the number of capital offenses for just minuscule crimes, including gathering sticks on the Sabbath, uh, speaking back to your family, if uh, you marry a woman and find out she's not a virgin on, her, on the wedding night, you're supposed to take her to her father's doorstep and have her stoned to death. Fun. Um, I mean, it is crazy. It is just crazy the stuff that's in there. Um, yet, people don't really do that. I mean, you have to have sort of a context like, um, like the Taliban or something. And I think that's a really good example, too, if you look at, say, Uganda. Laws like that, I mean, even fundamentalist Christians in the United States aren't actually asking us to straight out murder uh, homosexuals. Right. We're not trying to pass those sorts of laws in the United States because they know they wouldn't get very far. Right. I mean, that's the sort of thing. It's, it's like if you even look at the sort of connections between somebody like um, who's the guy? The guy who wrote the Purpose Driven Life. Oh, um, great! Now I'm drawing a blank. Drawing a blank. Rick Warren. Thank Rick you. Rick Warren. Yes. Uh, Rick Warren, who had connections to the legislator who was actually passing that bill. Um, it took him two weeks to actually apologize for that. Yeah. So clearly there's, I mean, he feels that way, but even he knows that eventually it's like, crap, I'm going to have to denounce this. Um, yeah. It doesn't get very far. You're not going to get that sort of Taliban sort of atmosphere. Yet Christianity looks a lot like Islam in that situation. If it's given, it's like a goldfish. It'll grow to the sort of house that you give it. Yeah. And if you keep it sort of, a, you sort of keep religion uh, sort of kept back through things like the separation of church and state and uh, protection of rights of minorities in, a, in an area, it's going to be held back and even the people in it. And again, why is it that they don't do a lot of these things? It's not because the book uh, on, with a deeper reading is, is actually saying the opposite of the text, it's because people are applying an outside morality to this book. Right. Um, clearly they think that slavery is wrong, therefore they choose to think that that's metaphorical. Or right. it's just, it's allegory of some way. Allegory for what? Um, oh, allegory of how you're a devoted slave to the Lord, whatever. Yeah, you're still no. basically a slave. No, they're referring to actual slavery in the Bible, owning yeah. another human being, which we no longer think is acceptable in our society. And yet it's in the Old Testament out. and New. It is indeed. And it Jesus is all over the Bible. And Jesus actually says that, you're, uh, that uh, you're supposed to slave, serve your masters well, but serve your Christian masters, especially well so you can partake in their, their, partake in their piety. Now, I mean, l let me point out here, I think it's Stephen good, as, as I talked about in the, the episode on Mormonism a couple of weeks ago, I think it's good that secular forces or greater community forces are helping to shape religion and to push them into a more uh, moral future where we don't do things like beat our kids anymore, even though, you know, the word of God says that you should. Or I think burn. it's good that these, these changes are happening. But people need to be aware, too. I, I think religious people need to be aware that, hey, you know, why don't I beat my kids? Why do I think it's terrible to beat my kids? Because the Bible backs up the practice of child abuse. So really apply your thinking to that. Think about it. Why do you think it's wrong, even though it says in the Bible, not only that it's right, but that you must? You must. Why? Same thing with burning witches. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Exactly. Um, we don't do that. Yeah. Though people used to, and again, we have to recognize it isn't that there was a deeper reading of this text where you go, oh, actually it means the opposite, and they go, oh, you're just reading text like a fundamentalist. It's like, you know what, you can use that argument with anything, but you never say reading like a fundamentalist for anything other than Abrahamic scriptures. Right. Because you can do the same thing with like a George W. Bush speech and say, oh, well, you know, actually he is a giant flaming liberal. <laughs> you just are reading it like a fundamentalist. See, when he's actually saying that, he's saying the opposite. Oh, why do you have to read things just like them? <laughs> It's, it's like, come on, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's a certain point where you have to say, this is not that religion is actually the opposite of what it says, let alone that a perfect, inerrant being would write a book that's so easily mistaken. Right. But that really what this is, is, as you've said, this is religion losing a battle with modernity. Yeah. It is being dragged kicking and screaming out of its ability to actually stone and burn you anymore. And thank goodness for that. Yeah, thank goodness. Do you really want this pope having the ability to burn Because here we are people? with a public access show in your living room or on your internets talking about how we don't believe in God. And uh, back in the old King James time, we would have been probably killed for this. Oh, absolutely. Not that I want to give any of you who might be watching any ideas. Seriously, even owning a Bible in English would have gotten you killed. Hey, you're right. Anyway, so. on that note...